So question 18, the last of the mechanics one from the 2012 Applied Maths Mechanics paper before it turns to just the maths questions. It's got this old chestnut here. That's just like a standard derivation, isn't it? A simple pendulum consists of a mass M suspended from a fixed point by a light and extensible string of length L. It's pulled to the side, so it makes an angle of theta. And the important thing here is it's pulled to the side, so the measurement of theta is the standard direction here, which is anti-clockwise. Hey. The mass is then released from rest, so it swings down, so the initial motion is going to be downward. Show that for small values of theta, this equation applies for three marks. Well, there is a force acting down the way. It's an unbalanced force. And that part's going to be, if that's the mass, m, so that's mg. And if that's theta, then using corresponding angles, that part there's also theta, which means this component here, the tangential component, is going to be the sine of it. So there's this force down the way here. And that force, that tangential force, is going to be mg sine theta. Now that's the only force that is acting down the way. I'm not interested in this tension that's making it swing in a circle. So that's going to provide the acceleration. So that's going to provide the acceleration. Now it doesn't want the linear acceleration, the tangential acceleration, it wants the acceleration in terms of the angle, it wants the angular acceleration. So I'd have to change that. So I've got mg sine theta will be m. The ordinary acceleration is a, if you like, the linear acceleration is a, that would be r times the angular acceleration. Now r is l, so that's ml and I've used double dot, but they want to use the second derivative, so I'll use that. And there's one other thing. If the angle is measured this way, that acceleration, that force is actually acting backwards. So it's the negative of it. So I think the mark so far was there was one mark for getting the tangential component of the weight. And there was another mark for equating that force with the force that's going to produce the angular acceleration, which is, of course, in the opposite direction. Angle's measured that way, but the acceleration's going against the measurement of angle. That's why we've got a negative here. Now, just rearrange that. The M's will cancel, bringing that over to the front. I would have M's cancel. The L's going to go under the G, so I'm going to have L... No, I'm not. I'm going to have negative G over L sine theta. Remember, theta is measured in radians. And for small angles, the sine of theta approximates just to theta. Because remember, the Maclaurin's expansion of sine theta would be theta minus theta cubed over 3 factorial plus theta to the power 5 over 5 factorial. So if these are small fractions, these numbers are going to be very small. Which means that you end up with this. The second derivative, or if you like, the angular acceleration is negative g upon l times theta. It's in the opposite direction. It's proportional to the displacement and in the opposite direction. That's the equation for simple harmonic motion, which is in the form of x double dot equals negative omega squared x. The equation for simple harmonic motion, which is, of course, just a sinusoidal curve. So that's what makes a simple sound, which is harmonious harmonic motion. And that would just be x equals a sine omega t. If you're starting at the zero displacement, then you could also have plus some phase. And differentiate that twice you'll end up with this, because it will go to sine, will go to cos, and then it'll go back to negative sine. So you're back where you were, except you'll have that omega popping out twice. So the acceleration will be negative of what you started with, with an omega squared multiplying it. So that's in the form of simple harmonic motion, where omega squared is equal to g over l. First mark was just for getting that component. That was a mark there. 
The second mark was for getting the equation with the sign. And the third mark was for making the statement that for small angles, the sine of the angle is approximately the same as the angle when it's in radians, and so ending up with this one. And then if you go one step further and say, well, that's the form of simple harmonic motion, that means that omega squared, remember that's the angular velocity squared, should be g upon l, that's a mark. So that second part of A, I think I've already encroached upon it. Assuming that that's the case, find an expression in terms of L and G for the period of oscillation, and then use that to calculate the length of string for a period of two. Well, I'm down to just this is the important bit here now. So, an expression for the period. Well, the period will be, well, Omega will be the square root of g upon l. Remember, that's radians per second. That's the speed at which it's travelling, radians per second. So that, that's not a 4, that's an l. So the time will be, how long does it take to complete its sequence? That'll be 2 pi upon omega. So that means the period's going to be 2 pi upon that, or just invert it then, times root l upon g. So that was the mark. Then the last part was just a substitution. What would the length be so that the period of oscillation of this is two seconds? So I put a two into it. So I want two pi root L upon G has to equal two. So root L over root G would equal one upon pi. I'll just put it down. No, it won't. So root L upon G will equal one upon pi. L upon G will equal 1 upon pi squared, so L will be G upon pi squared, which is, using 9.8, 0 0.9929, and so on. So L is 0 0.99 metres, or 3 if you want. It should really just be 0 0.99. So it was 3 marks for that. The first was that one, which was over the, the page there, as it were. One for getting the expression for the period of the oscillation, and one for getting the length required for a period of two. Now part B. A particle, for the final four marks then from section A. A particle moving in a straight line, whose motion is also simple harmonic, oscillates with a period of 2 seconds, about a point O. The particle is moving towards O. Ooh, which way is that? Towards O. Moving towards O, we'll just take it here, with a speed of... Looks that's a positive amount. Right. Moving towards O with a speed of 4 pi metres per second. When it passes through a point P, which is 3 metres from O. Oh, it's quite a big bit of a simple amount of motion there. So the amplitude of the motion is 5 for 2 marks. Well, that's one where you need to know one of those equations, those two equations you're meant to know for simple harmonic motion, which both just come from simple harmonic motion would be, it's like a sine wave. If there's a circle turning and you watch that circle and edge, the little dot going back and forth. It's just A sine omega T. So that x dot would equal a omega cos omega t. And if you went one step further, a double dot would be negative a omega squared sine omega t. And of course, that's what you had to begin with. So you've got x dot equals negative. a sine omega t was x, so it's negative omega squared x. There's that one, which doesn't take long to drive if you don't remember it. Or there's this one, which you can combine together if you multiply that first one by omega, because you know that if you square this and square this and add them, it'll come to one. So you can get rid of that part and just have things to do with omegas and x dots and v's and x's. If you multiply that by omega, so multiply that by omega, now you square them, you would have, and we'll just call x dot v, v squared plus omega squared x squared, would equal, and adding those two bits together, that would just be a squared omega squared. So 
So subtracting, and it, I mean, sorry, taking that bit over, you would have omega squared as a common factor, and it would be a squared minus x squared. And those are all the bits you want in this. You know the velocity, you know the distance, you'll know the angular velocity from the period, and that'll just leave the amplitude, so that's what you're going to use here. v squared equals omega squared times a squared minus x squared. It's one of the two that you're meant to just learn. It doesn't take long to derive it if you can't remember it exactly. So v squared is, I'll just set it all out, that's 4 pi squared. Omega will be, if t is 2 pi upon omega, that'll be 2 pi upon 2 squared times a squared, which I don't know, minus 3 squared. The yeah, only thing I don't know is a. Well, what have I got here then? I've got pi squared and 16 pi squared. So 16 pi squared divided by pi squared will just be 16. So you've got a squared minus 3 squared equals 16. So a squared is going to be 16 plus that, which is 25. So a is going to be 5. Amplitude, 5 meters. Now, what's the second bit? That was two marks. One mark seemed to be for getting omega as pi, rather than remembering this. And the second mark was for the answer. Anyway, what's the second bit? Calculate the time which elapses from the instant which the particle leaves P to when it next passes through Q. What does it mean, next passes? When it passes, and then passes back again, or just when it passes, when it reaches it. Well, it's simple harmonic motion, so that was the expression. It, they all come from, those two equations just come from x equals a sine omega t. It just comes from a rotating circle of radius a travelling at a certain speed. Omega, radians per second, only viewed sideways. I never forgot what the question was. Calculate the time. Right, so the time, so I know all the rest of it. So x is... 3 metres away from getting to O. A is 5. Omega, we worked out, was pi. And T, I don't know. So I've just got to solve that. So I've got sine pi T is 3 fifths, which means pi T will be the inverse sine of 3 fifths. Or maybe I should just have bumped that pi over at the same time. 1 upon pi, now of course that's going to have repeating answers, but you just want the first time it happens. So that's just a case of put that into your calculator, and there it'll be. But remembering, you're in radians. So, remembering, radians, pressing the buttons gave you 0 0.2048 and so on. So we'll just round it off to 0 0.20 seconds. With, of course, one mark just for putting the figures into the formula for simple harmonic motion, and then a mark for the answer.